everybody, we're back. Welcome. 12 wins in a row, and then honestly, we I've, I feel like earlier today, I mean, it, it's still only 9.43 a.m., so you can kind of run the numbers for yourself on on how we've been doing today. Two long Isaac episodes, quick sip of coffee, and we're back, uh, you know, in the mines here. Um, I feel like we've been playing pretty well. We, we pulled out some runs that, uh, I mean, you got to, like, use your noggin, okay? Like, the last run, the win wasn't hard. Living long enough to get to the win. Now, that's what we're talking about. I think we are going to be a little bit gun-shy here. We're not going to try to get early um, Lazarus respawns in. I'm honestly just pretty happy to have a run that, for the first time in a while, has uh, great HP and also good forward prospects. <laughs> but, I'm, you know, we, we have not lost the run as the lost on this newfound ra uh, random pseudo streak that we've been trying to get ourselves involved in. That's pretty amazing. We've only had two runs, but I mean, still, like, you know, if I had two runs with the lost and two losses with the lost, I think people would be like, yeah, of course you lost. It's in the name. It's th probably one of the most fun fights you can have on the early floors. I'm not, let's not complain, okay? <laughs> So, anti-grab is a little... I mean, not everybody's gonna dislike this item. I think it's got it's got pluses and minuses. I gotta admit, you know, 20% faster rate of fire is a pretty enormous plus. Um, it, it makes the juice somewhat worth the squeeze, if you will. On the other hand, what if you just gave me that without forcing me to go through any trials and tribulations at all? What if you just... I'm just throwing this out. What if you just gave me the victory? What if you just gave me the victory without requiring me to actually, uh, you know, put my blood, sweat, and tears into it? You ever think about that? What if we just turned on the run and the item room was brimstone, mom's knife, or you had a choice of that, or tech X? I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know where I'm going with this. The caffeine's hidden the bloodstream. Still super stoked. I have not played Hitman 3 yet, so don't take this as like a, a an endorsement necessarily yet. But um, reviews on Hitman 3 today were they they came out yesterday. They're insanely positive. I'm so excited to play it in like an hour and a half. And I gotta admit, I was talking about Hitman with Sips on Dadcraft the other day. It was, I think it was literally yesterday. Um, but the flow of time is a little distorted in, in Baby Town right now. By the way, Baby not here right now. Baby's upstairs. So I'm, I'm being a little bit more a little bit more vocal, a little bit louder, even to some extent. Let me out, please. Let me, let me out. Let me, okay. Didn't lose our, our deal with the devil, at least. Um, okay, that, that could have cost us our deal with the devil. And doubled as incredible comedic timing, which would have been devastating for me personally. Um... And, and he actually echoed, like, a lot of stuff that I said. Like, the first Hitman game I played was Hitman Absolution, which is probably the most disliked Hitman game in the franchise, and I thought it was really fun. <laughs> then I went back and I played Blood Money, and I was like, I don't know if I really get it. And I know that that's, like, the opposite opinion of, of the average Hitman fan. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if my opinion on the subject will have changed now with the added perspective of having played a lot more Hitman 1 and 2 like Hitman 2016 and Hitman 2020, or 2018, I should say. Um, but at the time, I, you know, I think I was kind of more intimidated by stealth games, and I thought that it wasn't really for me, so, like, Hitman having, like, a little bit more of an action approach as well as, like, QTEs and stuff like that, I was like, you know what, this kind of, it tickles my fancy a little bit. Um, I don't think Hitman Absolution is actually like reviled. I think it's just considered kind of a, a misstep in the in the catalog. But um, so I never really I, I assumed that like you know with Hitman One being episodic and and stuff like that that it wasn't gonna you know there were there were a lot of things to get hung up on. And then when I ended up playing it, I was like, actually, this game is like amazing. And then when Hitman Two came out, I was like, it's more of the same, which is actually exactly what I want here. I'm not looking for innovations in, in Hitman. If anything, I'm just looking for like if every two years they could release like another six maps, I think I would I would I would keep paying sixty bucks, you know, for that game essentially into perpetuity. And it seems like that's what people are saying this one is. This is kind of just like more of the same, which is actually pretty sweet. Um, hold on, we should the Golden Horseshoe is like occasional double item rooms. 
It's one of the it's one of the trinkets I've never bothered to look up, I suppose. Uh, which describes about 75 trinkets in this game, but this runs pretty good. Not not being able to get a deal with the devil that like was transformative is kind of stinky, but apart from that, it's going really well. Um, even that's pretty good. I mean, this might be a run that's a little bit, you know, this might be a, a, a healing run, you know? We'll have to take the time and see. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited. There is no bomb in here, so I guess we'll just settle for a single spirit heart and explosive diarrhea. It was worth it. You gotta admit, there was a part of you that believed. Sometimes I think you gotta leave those little seeds in, in an Isaac run, where you just take like a 1 in 100 guess. And if it works, great, and if it doesn't, well, you know, nobody expected it to. It's like, a, it's, it's a no-risk uh, gamble. But yeah, I'm excited. Also feel like, um, you know, we're still feeling out like this new Twitch schedule and, and, you know, how, like the kind of content that I want to produce and it's only been two weeks but uh, you know that's long enough to settle into like whoa <laughs> all right then it's long enough to draw some conclusions about like things that work and things that don't um and we, the great news is there's been a lot of stuff that's worked but there's also been um i would say i i would like to work in more like semi-traditional gaming content and uh hitman is a great opportunity to do that the only th I, I i think i've I've misrepresented my approach to, like, playing games on the show as being like, you know, oh, we're never going to play games again. We're only going to do, like, personality tests and, like, you know, uh, guess which Desperate Housewives character you are and stuff like that. Um, it's not the case, I'm, but I am going to be way choosier. Like, if I could give a piece of advice to, to content creators, I give a lot of advice to content creators. Um, and most of it should probably be ignored, because I think what works for one person in this industry doesn't work for everybody. I haven't even taken my own advice on many occasions, but I would always say, like, you know, try new things, but be be slow to commit to a game. Because, you know, you're especially, like... I mean, take it from somebody who got stuck in the mud on Dark Souls 2 last year. Everybody thought it would be fun to play Dark Souls 2. Um, then I was like, what if we did a Sace This Only build to spice it up a little bit? And everybody was like, that seems like fun. It'll probably make it a little harder, but at least it'll be unique. And then I was, I, and I'm not blaming anybody else, you know, it was my own, uh, idea that ended up kind of cratering. <laughs> you know, it ended up being my third most streamed game of, of 2020, according to the Twitch recap at least, which, uh, you know, is a little bit of a sobering thought to begin with. And then, you know, of course, like, just people were not really that excited about it after, like, you know, four or five months of playing the game. Like, it, it just never ended. So, you know, I would, it helps to stay agile, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It helps to have some, some time in your schedule, like a little bit of slack. So if something amazing comes along, you can be like, oh, sorry. Sorry, former president Jimmy Carter. I can't do your sponsored video for... Habitat for Humanity, I gotta beat, you know, Winter Horse Valley in Dark Souls 2. Now, it's not, I, I made up that sponsorship deal. First off, like, I would make time for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, secondly, I don't think they should probably be wasting their operating budget on sponsorship, you know? They should use that, they should put the funds towards, you know, people who are in need. Um, I'm just presenting it as a, as a potent. Wouldn't that have been funny if that were the case? Well, no, it would have been sad, but in its own way, I guess, it's kind of a funny sadness. I suppose what I'm trying to get at. I don't even know what I would say to Jimmy Carter. Hello, Jimmy, how's it going? What were the 70s like? How are the peanuts doing? I got nothing to say. It's not like I'm mad at him or anything. I just I got nothing. I got no intel. <laughs> I know you're going to ask him if the hot dogs... Hey, hey, Jimmy. I hate to ask this question for the three... For the 300,000th time, Jimmy, but do you consider a hot dog to fit the stochastic requirements of what you would consider a sandwich to... Jimmy? Jimmy? Do you, do you think a hot dog is a sandwich? What if... What about a taco? What about a hard taco? What if instead of a tortilla... 
They didn't use a tortilla for it, Jimmy. What if they used bread instead? He'd be like, get this, get this young whippersnapper away from me. Was, I, I'd take the words right out of his mouth. All right, so I'm a bit of a coward here for taking Epic Fetus, but I wouldn't have it any other way. This is a dream come true. So I'm not, because uh, I, I, and you know, I always, half, half of my content at this point, this is not inside baseball talk, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm very, maybe inside high ally, but no inside baseball. I think, you know, I, I got people a little bummed out when I said, like, it's unlikely we'll do, like, a Death Stranding playthrough. Um, I think what, it, like, right now, you gotta remember, like, when you first get, like, you, you pivot to, like, a new schedule, or, like, a, you know, you start a new hobby or something like that, you get insanely motivated, or at least I do. So, like, every week right now, and this sounds, like, braggadocious, I don't mean it like that, but every week right now, the schedule fills up in, like, a snap, you know? Dadcraft, collaborative stuff, hey, let's do, you know, like, we got a lot of segments that people are really enjoying right now. Sporkle, AI Dungeon, you know, we uh, gotta do GeoGuessr, of course we'll put GeoGuessr on the schedule, you know, we got two NLSSs or, like, an NLSS and, and some co-op RimWorld with Malf every week. You know, we got, like, a lot of things are filling the schedule up. Inevitably, as time goes on, you know, the interest in some of that stuff will wax and the interest in some of that stuff will wane. And eventually, I'll probably be looking at a schedule where I go, like, you know what? I've got like 10 hours of stream this week and I don't know what to put there. And that's where we might start to see a little bit of a little bit of story driven stuff. So that, that's not going anywhere. Really, what I'm looking for is is the idea that like if we could just somehow if David Cage started a Patreon and and we could just have like a new David Cage mini story come out like once every six months oh man I'd be I'd be living the dream I uh, I'm uncomfortable sometimes people online um, sometimes are, are very mean to David Cage and I'm not suggesting like I know there's been you know allegations and stuff like that at Quantic Dream that I you know it's, it's not for me to say, I guess, is what I would comment on that, you know? I, I, I don't work there, but I also don't necessarily find them hard to believe, necessarily. Um, but it, at the same time, you know, it's, it's not for me to say without having, you know, any, any evidence or whatever. But I, I'm all, I, like, from exclusively the artist standpoint, and I, this isn't really, like, uh, on the subject of separating the art from the artist, but I'm always like, man, I, I, I... David Cage is, like, in some ways, my favorite type of artist. And this is very rude. What I'm about to say is very rude. So I'm going to preface it with a nice thing to make the, the you know, we're going to wrap the boxing glove in a little bit of a pillowcase so that it, it, it doesn't hit as hard. But um, from what I can understand, a lot of people really love Detroit. I may think that Detroit uh, Become Human is uh, a ham-fisted metaphor for, like, social issues that it is handled in almost like a cartoonish way and is like a you know let's describe it as like maybe what a middle schooler thinks of uh, being a brave piece of art um but and 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 i'm not gonna like apologize for that because that's just my take on the on the media right that, that's my take on the on the on the game itself um just give me a second here this this is an interesting uh floor for us we probably will use Potato Peeler to the extent of its its abilities here. It, not a waste of our time at all. A lot of people will tell you that room is a waste of our time. It's not the case. I'm going all the way. Because I, I want to I wanna get that level 1 orbital again, too. Okay, and then maybe we can forget me now out of the boss trap room. Um, but if you like Detroit, I actually consider your enjoyment of that game to be like a net positive for the world. Just because, you know, I think that the more people are happy with things out there, then in, in some ways, A, it's good. I can be happy that other people are happy. And B, then, you know, the happiness kind of comes back around to you in a very indirect way. I mean, I'm not trying to go through, like, the machinations. All I'm saying is if you're spending a lot of time on the internet talking about how much you enjoy something, then, you know, you're, you're probably staying out of my hair. Or what's left of it, anyway. Um... But suffice it to say, um, you know, I, I think Detroit is, is not a great story, but it's like he's my favorite kind of artist because he's ambitious, but also like complete has has no awareness. And I think if you're 
if you're like a what I would consider to be like a clever director or something like that, having some self-awareness can actually add to the product. But if you're very ambitious but your execution isn't always there, I think you not being aware of that fact and always swinging for the fences, it, it, it leads to the fact that David Cage does not make unremarkable games. You know, and I, I get that there's a team. I'm just saying that him as the, uh, you know, as the auteur behind it, or, or from a top-down management spec standpoint, you know, for, on top of it. Like, um, you know, he, he doesn't make games that are unremarkable. I really feel like nobody in history has ever put down a David Cage game and been like, well, that was okay. I, I feel like people are either... Dude, like when Heavy Rain came out, it, it's baffling to me, having played it, you know, a few years ago. It's baffling to me that this happened, but it did. It was like the future of games when Heavy Rain came out. People bent over backwards. And they were like, this is the most mature, uh, story-driven video game ever released. It's it's a the new era for... For content, you know? Video games, you, you're sick of using your Mega Buster, Mega Man? Well, here's a gritty story uh, about murder. And it's like, it's... it's In its own way, like... Heavy Rain is almost more... Cartoony than, than, like, Super Mario Brothers. Like, the things that happen... Because it's trying to be a facsimile of real life... <laughs> it's trying... It, it has a pastiche of realism. Um, the, the kind of, like, insane things that happen in that game are, uh... Are that much, you know, more ridiculous, you know? They, they make it appear farcical in comparison. Um, which I love, by the way. I think that's... I, I think that that's beautiful. So, yeah, I mean, I... There are... I mean, I would never tell, like, a, a company, like, stop making games. Um, but if, even if I were that kind of jerk, um... Quantum Dream, or sorry, Quantic Dream? Quantic Dream wouldn't be one of the, uh, one of the first developers I would think of. I would rather they keep making games than, than almost any studio on the planet. Because every single one of them gives me a lot to talk about. Alright. Necropolis won on a on a pretty steady, nearly guaranteed victory here. Feel, and honestly, feeling like deserve is kind of like an entitled word to use. But we've had some tough runs in the past, uh, I mean, literally today for me, but in the past three days on the channel. I'm, I'm feeling, uh, feeling like we were kind of owed one, and we got one, so, so no complaints. But yeah, so, like, video game and content is not going anywhere, but here's, like, I want to introduce a lot of variety, and, and we'll probably overcorrect for a while, you know? We'll probably, and I get the irony that I'm playing Isaac while I say that, but, like, there's been years where I played, like, three games total. Try to, we might overcorrect for a little bit. Like, like a dad, you know, after a divorce going through, like, a midlife crisis, he buys a sports car, Starts playing Fortnite, starts streaming on Facebook gaming or something like that. You're like, come on, Dad. You're compensating right now. So we'll probably do so, like, over variety. And then, like, the second content, or the second priority for content after that is, like, games that don't require a large investment. And that's not like, oh, I don't, I'm so worried the audience is going to get bored that I don't want to play something that, you know takes more than 15 minutes like it's not really like that it's just like there are games you can duck into and duck out of you know nobody's popping into your chat going like when are you going to finish league of legends <laughs> i'm i don't want to play the game for myself i want to see how it ends have you finished league of legends yet you know um so so that kind of stuff it carries less of a commitment because like there's less of a consequence if it goes uh if you decide like one day you're not feeling it right um but I definitely do still want to work in some story-driven stuff. And and for sure, like, I, I can't say that Death Stranding will be first on the list, but it, it's it's definitely still even now on my radar. We'll just figure out how the schedule goes. I know I keep flip-flopping on it, but again, we're, we're figuring it out. You want to call me a flip-flopper? That's fine. You know, back in my day, we had, we had another word for flip-flopping, which was... Um, being a, a smart adult who changes their opinion uh, in response to, you know, changing environments. 
No one ever looked at, at jeans and went, Hey, jeans, why are you being such a flip-flopper? 100,000 years ago, you were, you know, coding for proteins that would fold into gills. <laughs> now you're trying to get us to grow these legs? What is it? Aquatic life or terrestrial life? Make up your mind! They were probably like, thanks, jeans. I was, my fingers were starting to get pruney. <laughs> happy to be, happy to be out of that stinky ocean. It's not really how evolution works, but you know, you get what I'm saying. In, in so many ways. Alright, 100% chance for a deal with the devil. I don't even know what we're looking for at this point, because the run is like, like all of our basic needs are tended for. Um, I think like what we would be looking for maybe is... Blank card emperor? And I know that that's kind of like a... Essentially, I'm kind of just... Saying... We want the run to be over. I don't want it to be over necessarily, but it is a win. <laughs> like there, it's it's an inconceivable loss at this point. So I think we will Perthro regardless because we know that this is going to be something new. Let's go left item, man. Holy mantle. It's a beautiful item. I don't think it's. I mean, we've now had it three runs in a row, which is incredible. So I'm not complaining. But um. Not, not as useful when you got, uh, you know, Epic Fetus, but, but either way, still pretty stoked. So yeah, apart from that, what's going on? Not, not a whole heck of a lot, man. Like, you know. Just a virus, you wouldn't know it from the way that a lot of people are talking, but virus is still, like, going on. I can't remember how much I talked about it on video, but we, we kind of had, like, a little bit of a, a COVID scare. The other day, uh, like on Saturday, I guess we'll take 10 bombs. Where Kate was like, I'm not feeling well. Oh, I, I, we get both items. Golden Horseshoe, dude. <laughs> it's so worth it. Um, but yeah, Kate, Kate was like, I'm not feeling well. Um, and of course you're like, oh God, you know? And then you, lo you look up the symptoms for uh, COVID online. And it used to be like if you ever went to the internet and you're like, what do I have? 100% they were going to tell you you had a terminal disease, right? You're like, I have a headache. What do I have, WebMD? And they're like, mmm, it's, uh, yeah, you got brain parasites. B brain, that's, it could be a symptom that you have a spider in your brain who is eating your gray matter slowly. Could also just be like light dehydration, but, you know, <laughs> it's the, the spider is at the top of the list, despite having, uh, you know, one case uh, in Earth's history. But, anyway. Instead of that, now, every time you go online, they're gonna tell you it's COVID. Which, admittedly, seems kind of, like, prudent in a, in a pandemic situation, you know, that, in, especially when you have a disease that can present in so many different ways. Um, you, you want people to be getting tested, for sure, but, you know, she, she didn't have, like, dry cough, she just had, like, a... You know, she, she was kind of like running a little bit hot, but not like a literal fever. Anyway, long, long story short, they were kind of atypical COVID symptoms. We didn't want to go to the... It was a Saturday, so our doctor's office isn't open. And it was like after um, like walk-in clinics throughout most of the city had closed. There were still a few open, thankfully, for, you know, reasons I guess we'll get to later on in the story. Um, but we were like, okay, first things first, like... Why don't we call, like, the nurses hotline, which is something you can do, um... I don't know if, if they do it in other parts of the world, but basically, you know how there's, like, a 911 for emergencies, and then there's, like, a 411 for information? In in BC, you can call 811, and you can speak to a, a, a registered nurse. You know, maybe you, you want to... Like, you maybe have a question, like, they, they told us when we left the hospital, they're like, if you have non-urgent baby questions, you should call 811. You know, because you, you don't necessarily want to go to the emergency room because, like, your kid's breathing like a pug. <laughs> Which, if you Google, by the way, if you just Google baby breathing like pug, you're going to get, like, a billion results. It's just, you know, they get a little congested sometimes, they get a little fluid stuck in their throat, and they start to go, like, <laughs> you know. You know what pugs sound like when they breathe, probably. Um, so anyway, we called the nurses hotline, and they're like, you got COVID. 
<laughs> and I was like, eh, no, maybe, but like, I'm not suggesting, you know, we would necessarily know if we didn't have it. But, uh, you, you know, you get really, like, anxious at first. You're like, oh my god, it's COVID, and we got the baby, and blah, blah, blah. Then you start to audit, like, your time, and you're like, wait, like, we've never, like, left the house. And, like, um, especially... Like, we live together, so the fact that, like, she's got symptoms and I don't, and we spend, like, all day in, like, the same environment, you'd exp Like, I was, like, look, if I wake up in tomorrow or, like, two days from now and I feel terrible, then maybe we'll talk about it, but I think you might just have, like, food poisoning or something. Um, anyway, we took her to the after-hours clinic eventually. She had a COVID test, and the test came back negative, which is great news. Um... And, uh, you know, they were kind of like, yeah, you, you seem like a little dehydrated. Maybe you got food poisoning. It's hard, it's hard to diagnose, I'm sure. Which, by the way, you know, you, you kind of reap what you sow, I suppose. Like, people will see this as comeuppance if they have no self-awareness. But, like, uh, you know, like three years ago I, on the show as a joke, I was like, you know, I, f I feel like food poisoning doesn't exist. And then my case in point was that, you know, I feel like people oftentimes don't have the best diets and they don't treat themselves uh, super well. And, uh, you know, they might get the flu or something like that. And then um, when they crap their pants, they're not like, oh, it's definitely like the whole bag of baked lays I ate. Instead, they always go like, oh, it was like that. Yeah, we had that uh, jerk chicken three nights ago. I bet it was that jerk chicken. I knew it smelled funny because it had like spices and stuff in it. Um... Now, since then, I have been essentially gaslit into people assuming that I don't believe in germ theory, which is not the case. And then, the comeuppance there is that when I was like, yeah, my wife had food poisoning, you get like 5,000 people who are like, oh, really? Do you do... Mm, did you tell the doctor it doesn't exist? Did you... Do it? And I'm like, yeah, this is a really good time for this. It's a really good time to use the joke that most people thought was funny uh, five years ago against me. <laughs> it's like seems like a very very socially aware and and normal thing to do to someone and i'm not i'm not trying because i get it right like because when you're in the audience like it's all a joke right like you're watching the funny man and you're like yeah, nothing's off limits it's like you know when i bring up the story of like yeah oh we thought my wife had like you know the disease that's causing the global pandemic right now but it turns out it was food poisoning you know, I guess maybe I was being a little bit of a hypocrite because I don't normally try to solicit this reaction, but I guess I was kind of hoping to get a little bit of like, yo, that sucks. Glad she's okay. Instead, I got a lot of, um, yeah, but 1,700 days ago on the NLSS, um, when, when you were a different person, like you uh, uh, said that food poisoning didn't exist as a joke that you've acknowledged multiple times over the past few years you've willfully misrepresented, uh, just for humor's sake, but... Don't you feel sorry about it now? You know? Well, yes, but maybe not for the same reasons that, you know, you might have thought were so clever. Now I'm like, I'll just, uh, stop joking. Just pog. <laughs> wow, I just, uh, just inst instead of having conversations on the stream and, and trying to inject a little bit of humor, from now on we'll just do subscriber shoutouts and, and then everyone will be happy. I'm sorry, I knew I said we wouldn't get into inside baseball, I'm just saying. Everybody's a comedian. It didn't actually bother me, but, you know, it was more like... Stop. <laughs> was, that's, that's really what it was more like. It was, it was, it was less like, I'm so mad that you're using my words against me. And it was more like, everybody is, like, kind of cringing at that. Could you just knock it off? Like, like this is like a serious issue, but we've got a baby. We thought we were gonna have to. What do you like? What are you supposed to do with a baby when when the mother has COVID? Because you know she's still gotta like. I mean, I guess I just go out at that point and get formula. And we're trying to like run that stuff through our head, and then like, well, like how are we gonna like self isolate? Do I even need to self isolate? Because if she's got it, there's like a hundred percent chance that I have it. And you know, if if both of us have it, even if one of us has it, like the baby's probably gonna get it. And I understand, like it's you know, I, I, from what I understand, like for the most part. Kids have been pretty, like, you know, they're, they're not the highest risk factor for having serious complications from COVID, but you're still not like, okay, baby, uh, three months in the world, time to, you know, 
subject you, expose you to a potentially very deleterious virus and stuff like that. But people, there was like very little sympathy and a lot of like, this is a great opportunity for me to get in a dig about the, uh, the, the uh, joke that I did, again, people thought was funny years ago. But anyway, that's just, you know, I've just come to accept that that's what, that's what the internet is like. And, uh, you know, you, you, you can't, uh... You can't just get in the river with like a like a little piece of driftwood and try to redirect the flow. You you just gotta let it wash over you and be like, you know what? Is it raining? <laughs> and then you know change your clothes when you get home. Something along those lines. But anyway, so you know, it wasn't that fun. Um, but it, obviously, when the when the test came back negative, we were we were pretty stoked. But that's also why we're you know a little light on the anecdotes as well. Now I will say, in the interest of exposing my hypocrisy, we do think that we got food poisoning from some weird Chinese food. And it wasn't weird because it was spiced or anything like that. Kate told me like, after she ate it, she was like, oh yeah, like I thought it was weird. I bit into a vegetable that I wasn't sure what it was, but it was really mushy, so I thought it was a tomato. And then I realized this dish doesn't have tomatoes in it, so... That seems like the most likely culprit. Moreover, as I've acknowledged many times in the past, actually, I think I had food poisoning once. I just called it Norwalk, because I my, my friend's mom, and I was hanging out with my friend who's, whose mom you know, worked at, okay, like, uh, the story's very roundabout. My friend's mom worked at the hospital. There was a, a Norwalk, which is a virus, outbreak at the hospital. So I thought maybe he had been, like, an asymptomatic carrier because we were hanging out, and then I started, you know, crapping my brains out. So I was like, it must be Norwalk, but I'm pretty sure it was just bad Burger King <laughs> in hindsight. Because my friend who also ate the Burger King also started crapping his brains out. And then uh, Malf was with us. He didn't get uh, any Burger King when we went to Burger King, and he was totally fine. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And, of course, I am live every day, except Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Northern Line. Come check it out. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!